Part four of this project is about photography. Now I've put that this is an extension because it does depend on what equipment you have access to at home. But even if like me, you don't have a printer, um, I guarantee there's plenty that you can still achieve just with um, a phone or an iPad, for example. Take a series of photographs that link to your chosen theme or as a response to an artist or photographer that you've researched. Edit them using your phone settings or an app or any software that you might have access to. Print and present them creatively in your sketchbook if possible. Or if you can't do that, then you can present them digitally, for example, using PowerPoint. I've also included some images here of some very high quality GCSE photography books. Um, I've, I've just included these as inspiration, really. Um, but also you can see how well it works presenting the photographs against a dark backdrop. I want to give you a few quick photography tips at this point. The first one is to consider something called composition. Now that's basically how the elements within an image are arranged. So for example, making a photograph that appears balanced. One way of doing this is to use something called the rule of thirds, where you use the grid on top of your screen. Um, current year nines definitely know about this already. The idea is that you line up the key parts of your image along the lines where they cross. So for example, you can see here the surfer and then the horizon line. You might also think about having a foreground, a middle ground and a background if you're, if you're taking a landscape shot. Again, that just creates quite a balanced image with lots of interest. And then if you're doing something like a still life, then think about having a range of different sizes within the image. So small, medium and large elements which creates visual interest. The other thing I just want to briefly touch on um, is orientation. So if you're trying to, to capture something that's quite wide, then obviously uh, do landscape. If something, if the items that you're photographing are sort of taller and narrower, then um, portrait. And then finally, um, it's very easy to take shots that are out of focus. We all do it, it's easily done. Um, in order to create an image that's in focus, I recommend that you keep still when taking the shot. So movement will cause it to be blurry. Um, and then if you are using a digital camera, especially if it's um, a, a better camera, like a, like a bridge camera, for example, um, take your time when you're pressing down the button to take the photo. Um, if you rush it, it won't allow the camera to focus. With, with a lot of digital cameras, um, you press the button down halfway and you can hear it make a little noise. And that means that the camera is just adjusting and focusing in on what's in, what it can see, basically. If you rush it, it's more likely to create a blurry, out of focus image. On this slide, I've included my own example. So two of the artists that I was looking at for my project were Mark Ugolini and Mandy Barker. Now, both of these are photographers and you can see from these images that they focus a lot on their use of colour and found objects. And Mandy Barker in particular looks at the idea of creating abstract shape and pattern using these objects. Um, and her work also involves quite a lot of contrast. So the contrast of the bright colours against the, the dark backdrop. So um, using these artists as inspiration, I collected um, lots of objects that were all the same colour. This is my original shot. Um, I arranged them carefully and photographed them. I then used um, just basic editing techniques on my phone, playing around with the colour saturation, for example, and filters. Um, I then used um, a, a pic collage app to arrange them together like this. And then finally, I uh, also used a free app to experiment further with filters and adjusting the colour. There's, there's plenty of different options out there. Uh, it might well be that you already have something on your phone or even just, as I said, using your phone's settings to have a little play around. Um, you'll be amazed what you can achieve just with your phone. So I hope you have fun.